There are 25 things that you can let go of today, right now, that's gonna make a huge impact on the way your home looks and feels. So don't click away, grab a bag, grab a box, and let's make some progress and make your home feel so much better. If we haven't met yet, my name's Katie Wells. I'm a declutter expert and host of the Maximize Minimalist podcast. And through my show, my YouTube channel, and my online programs, I've helped thousands of families successfully declutter and keep the clutter away, which is a really beautiful thing, isn't it? All right, let's dive into number Number one, are you ready? Books you will never read again or books you bought with the best intention. Like I'm gonna read that one day, but it's been on your nightstand for months and years. It doesn't make you a bad person to declutter books. It doesn't make you a bad person to accept that you bought that book with the best intention and right now it needs to go to someone else who's actually gonna read it. Let's face it, if you do wanna read that book again, which you might not even ever want to, you can always go to the library, borrow it from a friend or download it on your phone. Why don't you simply Simplify the space in your house, get rid of some of the books that aren't really serving you. Maybe you use them in college. Maybe it was a classic novel you swear you'd read or you feel just represents part of your identity, part of your, I don't know, childhood, whatever that is for you. Keep the really sweet stuff, but let go of the rest and accept, accept that those books need to go and you're gonna feel so much better for it. When my kids were little, book covers got ripped off usually within seconds or minutes because my kids just were little. They were toddlers, they weren't super careful. So if you have any unsalvageable books book covers, whether they're on kids' books or books for you, let them go. And honestly, what I started doing is if I ever bought a new book, which was rare because we use our library all the time, or if someone gifted us a new book, I would immediately take the slip cover off and just know and have peace of mind that I wouldn't have to deal with it throwing it away later. Jewelry boxes. Have you ever purchased jewelry and it comes in a cute little bag or box and what do we often do? Oh, this is too cute to throw away and maybe I could repurpose this but then they just multiply. And before we know it, there's little jewelry bags and boxes and cute little boxes all over our house and we don't ever do much with them. So let go of that stuff, donate it, get it out of your house. And while we're talking about jewelry, let's talk about jewelry that's just no longer your taste. And I get it. I loved my jewelry I wore in the 2000s, right? That costume jewelry, I had a hard time letting that go for a long time. So one really great question to ask yourself is not have I worn this in the last six months or have I worn this in the last year, but ask yourself, have I had the opportunity to wear this in the last six months? Or have I had the opportunity to wear this in the last year? If the answer is yes, I have had the opportunity, but I haven't because I picked something I like better, that is a great cue that that jewelry can be passed along to someone who will love it. Makeup and expired makeup. Did you know that makeup and beauty products go bad? I didn't know that either. <laughs> Years ago, I discovered this when I went to open up my makeup and it smelled disgusting. And then I started opening up lotions and smelling them. What lotions? were once white, were now yellow, it went bad, right? <laughs> Most hygiene products have expiration dates. Usually it's anywhere from 12 to eight months after you open it. If it's something like shampoo that hasn't been opened, it'll last up to three years, but stuff does not last forever. It's not meant to last forever. So if the color is different, if the smell is different, or if there is an actual expiration date on the product, which often there is, let it go, <laughs> get it out of your house. Beauty products that you don't ever wear or use. Let's say you have some blush or some foundation that just wasn't the right fit and you tried it once so you don't want to throw it in the trash and you want to give it to someone who's going to use it. There are a few other organizations here in the U.S. that do distribute gently used makeup products, but I personally love Project Beauty Share because they distribute to a lot of nonprofit organizations that supply women and families who are overcoming abuse, addiction, homelessness, and poverty. Make sure to check out their website for specifics because they can't just take anything, but this is a great eco-friendly way to declutter and pay it forward to others who we know are gonna use this stuff. Next one is bras that don't fit. Ladies, life is too short to wear undergarments and bras that don't fit. Okay, so do yourself a favor and go invest in something that fits and makes you feel amazing and supported and comfortable and let go of the stuff, the bras, the undergarments that used to fit six years ago or two years ago, but just are falling apart. I promise you comfortable undergarments are worth the investment. Extra buttons. We all have had that drawer or spot in our closet or in our dresser where we just toss extra buttons. But here's the thing, if you ever lose an extra button, you can always go get a replacement. So let go of some of those extra buttons because one in maybe a million cases are buttons ever lost to begin with or do they fall off? So enjoy the space and peace of mind knowing that those buttons are gone. And even if you did lose a button, would you even know where your buttons are? If you're anything like me, they were scattered all over my house, buried in other clutter. So just get rid of them. Bra 
squat and swimsuit top inserts. Do you know those little foam pads? They're usually triangles or circles that come in swimsuits or different bras that most of us just take out. They are clogging up your closet. They look funny anyway, and they usually aren't even that comfortable. So there's no need to hang on to those. Let them go. Free totes and bags for those companies that know us well, who love to say, spend $50 and get a free tote when we really know nothing in this world is free, is it? Let go of some of those free totes and bags that you've been accumulating for the past 20, 30, 40 years. Keep one or two of your favorites and let the rest go. They're doing nothing but enabling you to hang on to too much clutter. And while we're talking about our closet space here, let's talk about shoes that you haven't worn in years. Just because a shoe fits doesn't mean you need to keep it. High heels you haven't worn in years, flip flops that have seen better days, shoes that are uncomfortable that you never reach for because you always reach for your favorite comfortable pair. Same thing goes for clothes. Clothes and shoes are not valuable to us if we are not wearing them. So let go of that excess shoes and clothes in your closet. And while we're talking about excess, let's talk about home decor. Did you know that having too much decor can actually make your home feel and look more cluttered than it is? So embrace some white space. Try taking some pictures off your wall or moving some furniture pieces around or decluttering and donating some big furniture pieces that might be taking up too much space in your house. And you'd be surprised, it will often feel like an instant facelift to your home to have a little bit less decor. One rule that I recently heard from a home design person, and you can take it or leave it, is that anything smaller than the size of a pineapple, I know it's totally random, is gonna feel more cluttery than something that's larger than a pineapple. And after looking around my home, I realized I have very few home decor pieces, a few like little can and things like that that are smaller than a pineapple. Again, take it or leave it, kind of weird advice, but it stuck with me and looking around my house, it makes a lot of sense why I feel really good in here. I don't feel like my home decor is too cluttery. Broken and unfixable items. How many of you have hung on to stuff that you plan on fixing one day and then that day never comes. Games, toys, electronics, all things like that. Accept it, okay? It doesn't make you a bad person and let it go. If you're not gonna put the time and energy into fixing this now, give yourself a deadline, you're gonna feel better just getting it out of your house and getting it out of your mind. Excess sheets and towels especially ones that have seen better days. Here's a great place to pay it forward and donate extra stuff like this, our animal shelters, our furry little friends, I'm a cat mom, <laughs> but our furry little friends in our communities usually love getting hand-me-down blankets, towels, sheets, and the like. And so call a local animal shelter and see if they are accepting stuff like this. Even pillows can be helpful. Um, so you don't always have to drop everything off at Goodwill, keep that in mind. If you feel better paying it forward to different nonprofits and organizations, spend two, three, four minutes doing a little research on our trusty friend Google and maybe you'll be able to identify someone or some pet, <laughs> some furry friend that will really benefit from some of your unwanted stuff. Junk mail. Junk mail is a doozy, isn't it? So much junk mail. Gosh, one rule I live by and I encourage you to live by too is to not even bring junk mail into your home. I have a recycle bag in my garage. Uh, so when I come in from the mailbox, I immediately dump Usually that's between 75 to 90% of the mail that I get delivered. I dump it straight into the recycling bag. I don't even bring it into my home because I don't want to have to handle it later. I only want to handle it once. That allows me to do that. If you do have junk mail, spend five minutes today getting rid of it. You are going to feel so much better. If you have piles and piles of junk mail and mail you need to tackle, breaking it down in a super small task, like I'm going to handle five pieces of mail today. At the end of the week, you've handled 35 pieces of mail because five times seven is 35, right? You get the idea. Breaking these overwhelming tasks down into small itty bitty tasks can be really, really helpful. Expired foods and spices. Let's head into the kitchen, shall we? Open up your cupboards and I promise you there are some things in there just like there were in your bathroom. If you have a ton of items that are expiring soon and you know that you're not gonna be able to consume these, I would encourage you to check out a local food pantry to take some of those items off your hand. Doing this and getting rid of this expired or almost expired foods that you know you don't need or want will give your kitchen an instant facelift. You know I'm all about those. And maybe after you're done in the kitchen, you head into the kid's play space or the kid's bedroom. So excess anything, let it go. If you just haven't spent the time yet you know it's clutter, like tackling stuff the kids have outgrown, the toys, whether that's toys or clothes or shoes or raincoats, or maybe you spend a few minutes in your entryway letting go of old hobbies that the kids have different hobbies now. Maybe they played soccer and now they play baseball. 
So letting go of things that are no longer serving you and your family, it's a really beautiful thing. And the more you do it, the better you will get at it. Don't underestimate the power of small steps like this. I know I threw 25 ideas or more at you and it's a lot. So if you schedule in your calendar, five minutes here, 30 seconds here, two minutes here, it all adds up. And that compounding interest continues to save you time and save you energy down the road. So after you're done with these 25 things, it doesn't need to end there. If you're looking at other spaces in your home and you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling like this is too difficult, make sure to tap the video nearby because I'm going to give you three simple steps to getting started decluttering.